I will be talking about the use of digital twins in additive manufacturing process environments. This work was carried out as part of the ongoing DigitBrain project, which is part of the H2020 Research and Innovation Program. First, I will introduce the concept of digital twins. Then I will touch on the basics of process monitoring in metal additive manufacturing and highlight some of the challenges we face in applying this in multi-site and production environments. Finally, we will look at overcoming these challenges through the use of digital twins using the DigitBrain project architecture and resources. So first off, what is a digital twin? A digital twin is a virtual representation of a physical machine or process that evolves dynamically with its real world twin. The main goal of digital twins are to optimize a process, predict issues, aid in scheduling preventative maintenance with greater accuracy, and to provide a live monitoring tool to facilitate lights out manufacturing. A key aspect of digital twin systems is that they are constantly fed with new data from a real world counterpart. The real world part, machine or manufacturing process regularly updates its virtual con con counterpart through its life cycle so that the twins can evolve together. The architecture of a typical digital twin solution looks something like this. Hardware components, IoT sensors and hardware assets that communicate with data management middleware repositories to accumulate data, and networks to handle data movement and visualization. Lastly, software components are required to process the raw data and provide valuable insights using algorithms, simulation tools, and machine learning models that feed into a visualization dashboard. I'll be focusing on process monitoring approaches for laser-based powder bed fusion, as that is one of the most popular AM approaches in the aeronautical field and for medical devices like the ones produced by our project partners 3D MedLab. The motivation behind a project like this is the lack of transparency in the laser-based powder bed fusion process and a level of uncertainty in the technology's capability that have acted as a barrier to entry into new areas. Typically, process uncertainty is dealt with through expensive and time-consuming validation and post-processing which reduces much of the benefits that additive manufacturing offers. This guided us to our objective of developing a digital solution for better control and tracking of process performance. Our solution aims to give users more transparency and control over their additive manufacturing equipment. It's common for newer laser-based powder bed fusion machines to have various in-process monitoring systems for process analysis. These are still an active area of research with limited industrial use due to high setup and data storage costs, and the necessary hardware isn't common on older machines. There's an array of established material part and testing techniques, such as tensile and compressive testing, impact and hardness testing, but these are often impractical due to time and costs involved, and they require parts to be destructively tested. This can be addressed by printing sacrificial or so-called witness parts on every single build that can be tested afterwards to validate that that particular build and act as proof that the machine was operating correctly at that point in time. But these still require investment in, equip in equipment to test parts. And the tested parts are then scrap material, but they still took up space on a build plate and required material and energy to produce. This led us to the idea of a digital witness part. Could we use sensors within the machine to track performance stability over time, both during a single print and then over the lifetime of a machine? By gathering data and modeling it in the right way, could we build up a digital model of our process using readily available sensors and link that back to part characteristics? To develop this idea of a digital witness part, first we had to establish what factors to pay attention to and look for links between them and key quality metrics. Through conversations with our OEM Renishaw and our industrial partner 3D MedLab, and by trawling back through our service records, we identified the most common sources of machine deviation in health or performance. This included issues with laser power demand versus supply over the lifetime of a laser system, temperature deviations around vital elements in the optical systems, and coolant and gas flow rate, gas flow rate issues throughout the machine. After a number of prints in both our Renishaw and the one that 3D MedLab use for manufacturing of medical devices, we came up with a data set that gave us good indication that we could link part density to the factors we were varying in our experiments 
and we could pick this data up from the built-in sensors within both machines. Here are the main effects plots and some box, box plots giving a snapshot of both the printers in IMR and 3D MedLab. In this experiment, we altered our laser power by plus or minus just 6.5%, which is not an unrealistic deviation to see, to, to see between annual calibrations. We also altered the gas flow rates of both machines between 19, 29 and 39 meters cubed per hour to simulate clogging filters or unexpected drops in line pressure. We found that a combination of these factors could easily cause an increase in porosity of our parts by almost 2%. As expected, we also see slight differences between both machines being captured in this data, but typically we observe larger differences between good and bad prints on either machine as uh, as, it, as opposed to any given print across both machines. This data was then passed to our data analytics team who, using machine learning algorithms, were able to create digital models with which we could compare new data sets to and assess machine performance or reducing the amount of post-processing testing required. This allowed us to apply the digital twin concept to our solution. The use of sensors and advanced analysis and modeling techniques provide greater insights into the additive manufacturing process. Using appropriate networking and data handling infrastructure means the solution can be applied to multiple machines across multiple sites. And the use of cloud resources to carry out analysis to store data makes it easy to scale the solution to the needs of the customer and reduce the initial cost of investment. Now to look how we put this all together during our project. After a print on our initial, we ended up with a stream of recorded data points in a CSV file. To the right of the screen is a screen grab of CSV file post-process containing somewhere in the region of 27,000 lines of readings from each of the 29 sensors from just one of several 13 hour prints carried out. This is quite a significant amount of data. These sensors are monitoring everything from oxygen content, temperature and humidity, gas flow rates and differential pressures in key areas of the machine. It's easy to extract these files from the machine, but currently there is no after print analysis or report to indicate how the machine was performing or to detect any anomalies that we can prove could impact our printed parts. The first step in our solution is to take this jumble of data points and extract the important information that indicates if the machine was running reliably and if the process was running stably. After data capturing the machine, we extract the, ne we extract the necessary sensor and log files from, from the local storage to a remote desktop. That desktop then uploads the data to a cloud using storage clients like Minio to handle data and network traffic safely and securely. The cloud client we used for the project was the CloudBroker platform. CloudBroker is a software as a service provider that handles the heavy lifting involved in running data analysis algorithms developed by our in-house data analytics team. This gives us massive flexibility to scale our computer resources on demand. We could also create virtual machines in the Cloud Broker platform to visualize data. And these could be remotely accessed by users at any time from any location. This is an overview of our technical architecture. We stream machine de sensor data up to the cloud and use the Cloud Broker platform resources to carry out our analysis using machine learning algorithms, modeling the data as a digital twin based on the sensor information and visualizing it in the cloud. This allows users to remotely log in and view the data and increases the transparency of the process, bringing vital process information to the fingertips of key decision makers. Upon logging into the cloud, we land on a status dashboard that shows real-time monitoring of the main machine sensors. This overview allows for quick and easy health checks by any of the users. A build can be paused to fix an issue, can be paused to fix an issue as they are detected uh, by the algorithms or the machine can be stopped to avoid waste of time and material. This solution is remotely accessible to facilitate lights out manufacturing. Entire time series can also be displayed for each sensor during and after print, and different features can be displayed by selecting the related sensors. Anomalies are highlighted on the graphs thanks to the anomaly detection algorithms that have been defined from the digital twin analysis of earlier prints. Users are made aware of process drift and potential anomalies and can decide if they are critical or not, and consequently adapt the quality check procedures post-process. Visualization and analysis of historical data is also possible and is used to detect machine-to-machine -machine variation, potentially leading to optimized machine qualification procedures. The machine models can be updated over time, allowing for digital analysis to evolve with the machine, highlighting undesirable machine drift 
and leading to an improvement of the preventative maintenance scheduling. So the key benefits of, these, of this dis, digital twin approach are the online monitoring capabilities, a reduction in the need for in-person quality checks, the ability to highlight machine to machine variants and the variance in a single machine over time, a reduction in the material and time wastage and greater confidence and control when scaling up production run. This system is by no means flawless and we're looking for opportunities to keep exploring and developing digital twin models uh, and increasing the functionality of our user interfaces. If you are interested in getting involved in the world of digital twins or the project that supported this work, the Digit Brain Consortium will be holding an open call from March to June of next year. They will be looking for SMEs, research and technology organizations, and technology providers to get involved in the next wave of experiments. And funding of up to 100,000 euro is available for successful applicants. More information can be found on the digitbrain.eu website. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'll hand back to Gary for the Q&A session. Excellent. Thank you, Alex. From Alberto, he wants to know, how do you set limits or the criteria for stability or re reliability based on the data jungle? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. Something we we struggled with for a while uh, at the start of our project. You know, how, how do we define um, a, a process that's running stably? Uh, we, we kind of went for a bit of a hybrid approach of doing quite a bit of experimentation on our own machines uh, and trying to understand, okay, how do we generate good data and bad data on that for comparison purposes? Um, and then we had a huge amount of help from our data analytics team um, who can develop you know, sort of data ingestion models that generate, uh, uh, you know, an idealized model based on feeding it, you know, taught data. It's, it's you know, difference between sort of, uh, I'm afraid I'm not an expert in the data analytics side of it, but, you know, learning models and un unsupervised learning um, for machine learning. And um, so there's a combination of, of approaches that we took and really it comes down to generating data and, and feeding it into one of these algorithms that, that can understand uh, how, how to pick it apart in more detail.